Right. Well, historically, in the early days of electricity, there was a very fascinating gentleman called Nikola Tesla. And I think he came from somewhere... Um, Austria? No, from somewhere in the Baltic, Baltic states. Okay, yeah. Um, Serbia or something like that. Yeah. Um, but this guy was a, a complete genius. Um, and he ended up in America uh, working in the early days of uh, sort of electricity when they were thinking about trying to broadcast things with DC. Um, and uh, he said, no, he needs to be, he, he wants to do it with AC, but that's, that, he did it with AC, but he really didn't want to do it that way. He wanted to do it a completely different way through the air itself. And he, he built a system to do this, uh, but that never actually um, uh, got to uh, commercialization because uh, his sponsors, um, Morgan, as, as in the bank guy, uh, decided he could never tax it. He could never get his money back if anybody could just pull uh, energy from, from the air. Uh, so that had to stop. Uh, but, but one day Nikola Tesla was... Um, he just lived in New York and he lived in a hotel and he worked there and he was pretty much working 17 hours a day. Uh, and coming back to his apartment, he got knocked over by one of the early cars or maybe a horse drawn carriage or something. And he got really quite badly injured. But rather than go to hospital, he decided what he'd do. He got back to his lab and he decided he'd make something that would help him get better. You know? Yeah. So you know what he made? He made a thing called a violet ray tube. And... Um, it, 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 it's a very easy device, it's a little box, you plug it into the mains, you have a, a handheld device and you have different glass electrodes that you can put into it and uh, they're, they're like uh, helium or neon gas that's uh, in, in the glass tubes at low pressure and, um, and, and the electrical system generates what's called a co corona, right, <laughs> very topical discharge yeah. uh, that goes from the um, end of the glass electrodes into your skin where you've got it, you, you can sort of feel it. But um, anyway, he managed to get himself better very quickly using this device. And you know what, you can still buy them, you can buy them on uh, on eBay, and the old ones, you know, like from, and, and if you went back to the 1920s, pretty much every doctor's surgery in the UK, and maybe America, would have their own violet ray machine box. And they would treat people with it, okay? And it works. I've got a couple, and they don't. You, it really does work. So all these systems have been there ages, but actually, what happened was at the early turn of the 1900s, uh, anybody who tried to like push uh, what what we'd now know as a, a pharmaceutical tablet, do you know what they were called? They were called quacks. But it all got turned around because a lot of money went in to the edu medical education system and the pharmaceutical companies. So now anybody who tries to, you know, use that sort of technique or homeopathy or other things that were very often used then, they tend to get called quacks. But they very cleverly turned it around. It was really the original ones. Where the quacks were the people who were trying to get rid of the waste products from the pharmaceutical industry into pharmaceutical tablets. The oil industry. Though. So they had waste products from the oil industry which cost a lot of money to get rid of, which got changed into like tablets, which are supposed to help you with your health. And some of them do, but some of them don't. Okay,